What is up, guys? It is Marcus from Perspective Sports, and today we are going to go division by division in the National Football Conference, aka the NFC, and predict the winners of each division and take a look at the playoff seeding. And let's start with the AFC South. This division seems to have a new breakout team slash player every year. First, it was Cam Newton, the Carolina Panthers. Then last year, Matt Ryan and the Atlanta Falcons. Both teams got their quarterbacks MVPs, but lost in the Super Bowl to historic NFL franchises. The Panthers lost to the Denver Broncos. And the Falcons lost, obviously, in the most horrifying fashion ever to the New England Patriots. But here are my predictions for this season. Atlanta Falcons will finish number one in 11 and 5, 2 and 4 in the division. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers will finish 8, 8, 4 and 2 in the division. The Panthers will finish 6 and 10, 4 and 2 in the division. And the Saints will finish 5 and 11, 2 and 4 in the division. And what I'm about to say may offend some Falcons fans. And it may come off as a surprise, but it really shouldn't. The Falcons will reclaim the division title this season, but they will take a hit, and I mean a big hit. Mainly because the Falcons were so successful last season because of offensive coordinator Kyle Shanahan. Last year's roster was perfectly tailored for Kyle Shanahan's system. And now that he's gone, I don't think Steve Sarkeesian, who is a good coach, will be able to make the most out of this roster. Kyle Shanahan's roster was so perfect that when he made the little things, it made a big difference. The additions of Mohamed Sanu and Taylor Gabriel. The additions of Alex Mack. The Falcons were Kyle Shanahan's roster that they allowed him to build, and they won games because of it. But now that he's gone, they have all this talent offensively, but it only works with Kyle Shanahan there. Now, I do think Steve Sharkeesian will have success with this roster because the roster is so good. But when you look at the numbers, Kyle Shanahan took Matt Ryan to a whole nother planet. In 2015, before Shanahan got there. Matt Ryan had 21 touchdowns and 16 interceptions. One year later with Kyle Shanahan, his numbers go from 21 and 16 to 38 touchdowns and 7 interceptions in an MVP award. That is a big difference. And it's because of Kyle Shanahan that he was able to do that. And now without Mike Shanahan, I think Matt Ryan will still be a good quarterback, but his numbers will drop back down. Next in the division, we have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers who will take a step forward as their young core of quarterback Jameis Winston, running back Doug Martin, wide receiver Mike Evans begin to mature together. In the offseason, they also added another wide receiver in Deshaun Jackson who's mainly a vertical threat but can really open up the field for Doug Martin and Mike Evans and the slot receiver if they use him properly. Deshaun Jackson is a speedster. He can get down the field in a hurry, which can really take the top off of a defense if used in the proper way. Up next, we have the Carolina Panthers, who won't be all that good this year despite drafting running back Christian McCaffrey, who I think is the best all-around back in this past draft class, where they didn't do much else. They still have no defensive backs. The O-line is still questionable. Cam hasn't learned to throw in the pocket, and this is where a lot of people get me wrong. I'm not saying only stay in the pocket, but look at Aaron Rodgers, Russell Wilson, Ben Roethlisberger, more or less. But take notes from them. You don't have to run everyone over. Cam needs to learn to win, needs to learn when to throw it away, take it, get the first down and slide. But you're not a running back. You're going to take hits. And if you're complaining about taking hits to the helmet, how about you slide? How about you get out of bounds? Stop trying to run everybody over. And you will stop taking hits to the head. And so at, even if Cam does learn to do this, the roster just isn't good enough to compete for a playoff spot, and I think Cam Newton will have a better year than he did last year, but it won't be enough to get them to the playoffs. Up next, we have the New Orleans Saints, who aren't going to compete this season. They have gotten somewhat better, but not really, adding running back Adrian Peterson via free agency and cornerback Marshawn Lattimore via the draft. But they're currently going to enter the season without defensive tackle Nick Fairley, who's dealing with medical issues outside of football. And that will be a big hit to a team that already has little to no defense. But Hall of Fame quarterback Drew Brees will still put up great numbers. But again, it will be all in vain because outside of offense, they have nothing else. And that will play a big role in their failure to win games this season. Up next, we have the NFC North. And since this division came into existence, it's been dominated by the Green Bay Packers. And this year won't be any different. The Packers will finish number one in this division at 11-5. 5-1 in the division, the Vikings 2nd, 9-7, 3-3 in the division, 
The Lions six and ten, four and two in the division, and the Bears four and twelve, zero and six in the division. This shouldn't surprise anyone. The Packers will win this division, but have the same problems as last year. Aaron Rodgers will carry this otherwise four or five win team throughout the season, making big plays and playing at an MVP level. The Packers offense is amazing, but again, it's the defense that is the cause of concern for Green Bay. Outside of HaHa Clinton Dix, there's no guy I'm 100% confident in. We don't know whether Clay Matthews will play inside or outside linebacker. Can Jake Ryan step up? Can Demarius Randall get better? But the Packers will still be an elite level team and will certainly be Super Bowl contenders per the usual. The Minnesota Vikings have a solid roster on paper, but as people seem to say that every year and it never seems to work on the field. Despite having a solid roster, they don't have a reliable cornerback and quarterback Sam Bradford puts up good numbers, but it never translates to wins. The Detroit Lions have lost not only a big part of their offense, but a big part of their team when wide receiver Calvin Johnson announced his retirement, citing they weren't going anywhere, which was true. But now quarterback Sam Bradford doesn't have a reliable number one receiver. I know people are going to throw out Golden Tate's name, but he's not a number one option on an offense I'd like to coach. The Lions also don't have a solid running back and have a questionable defense at best. So this year will be a learning process and a learning curve. And this will really show the Lions how bad they need to keep Matthew Stafford in order to be competitive. Next, we have the Chicago Bears who will finish last in the division. But I think the Bears took the best quarterback from this past draft class and a guy who I thought would become a star in this league. I say thought because he's walking into a bad situation. A head coach in John Fox who needs to win now to save his job. And a guy who is Mitchell Trubisky who isn't really even ready to play right now. He still needs time to develop. Remember, he only had like one season at North Carolina where he did good. But in this current situation, they expect him to come in, make plays, and carry this team to the playoffs and ultimately win games, which he won't do. And after this first season, he'll likely be getting an entirely new coaching staff, which is never good for a young player. Just ask Jared Goff. Up next, we have the NFC West, and this division really seems to beat up on each other. As you know, the Rams always seem to find a way to beat the Seahawks. The Cardinals are always a good game. The Seahawks are always fun to watch, and the San Francisco 49ers just got the best head coaching candidate from this past year. And here are my predictions. The Seattle Seahawks will finish number one at 11-5, 5-1 in the division. The Cardinals will finish 10-6, 4-2 in the division. The Rams will finish 3-13, 2-4 in the division. And the 49ers will finish 3-13, 1-5 in the division. Good for last place. As you see, this division will come down to the very last week when the Arizona Cardinals and Seattle Seahawks face off in Week 17 for the division. I have the Seahawks defeating the Cardinals in Week 17, despite the fact that I think they'll take a step back in terms of efficiency. But after a chippy offseason, to say the least, that both the offense and defense will step up their aggression and intensity to outdo the other side, resulting in a good season and a good last game because... After an offseason of finger-pointing, trade rumors, etc., the last thing you want to do is be the reason your team fails, which means the offensive line and everybody will take a step forward. Not saying they're going to be great, but they're not going to be the... You, you want to avoid being the reason your team fails, which means they'll all step their game up week 17 when the division's on the line and pull together as a team. The Cardinals are one of the most complete rosters in the NFL, as they seem to be every year. They don't have any gaping holes in any position, so they'll definitely be in a position to compete, and we'll see if they make the playoffs with that 10-6 and record later in the video. The Rams and 49ers are in the same boat. A new head coach, a young quarterback, and no real expectations. I think the Rams will see big improvement with quarterback Jared Goff, because now that he has a season under his belt, and has adjusted to the pace and the speed of the NFL, that he will be more effective. But as for the 49ers, I think they're going to get better offensively simply because they have Kyle Shanahan at the helm, who is great with offenses, but it won't turn into wins because their roster is just so bad. Now for the NFC East, and this is probably the most marketable division in the NFL because you have the Washington Redskins, the Philadelphia Eagles, the New York Giants, and the Dallas Cowboys, who are always in the news for whether it's good or bad reason the Cowboys seem to always be in the news. But I think this division will look very different than it did last year, and here are my predictions. The Giants finished number one at 12 and 4, 5 and 1 in the division. The Cowboys finished second at 11 and 5, 4 and 2 in the division. The Redskins finished 10 and 6, 2 and 4 in the division. And the Eagles finished 6 and 10, 1 and 5 in the division. Yes, the New York Giants will win the NFC East and by default, the number one seed in the NF NFC. The Giants have a top three defense in all the NFL and have upgraded their offense immensely with the addition of wide receiver Brandon Marshall. 
And the only two problems for the Giants is left tackle and running back. The Giants are paper thin on paper and on film at those positions. But as I said earlier, their additions of Brandon Marshall and a great defense will make up for that. And just like last season, they are built to beat the Dallas Cowboys. And the Dallas Cowboys, who didn't have much of a defense last year, actually managed to get worse on defense. Which will be a big problem for them this season. But I also I expect Zeke to get some kind of suspension. But this projection is based on if he plays all 16 games. But if he is suspended, the Cowboys could be in serious trouble. And I mean miss the playoffs kind of serious trouble. But that's a horse of another color. The Dallas offense will take a step back. Dak will still put up solid numbers. Zeke will be Zeke. But defensive coordinators now have a whole year's worth of tape to look at. And plan for playing the Dallas Cowboys. And most importantly, Dak will no longer catch teams by surprise. Remember, we had very little preseason footage of him and very little in-season footage. So, of course, he was going to catch every team by surprise last season. The Washington Redskins will also have a good season. But in this division, it'll be tough to make the playoffs. You'll find out in a minute if they did. But quarterback Kirk Cousins now has very little weapons this year. Outside of tight end Jordan Reed and wide receiver Terrell Pryor, the Redskins lost wide receivers Pierre Garçon to the Void Niners and wide receiver Deshaun Jackson to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So Kirk Cousins will be working with basically an entirely new offense in terms of throwing the ball, and this might be a negotiation move from the Redskins. If he struggles, he might get out of paying him the big money, but that's neither here nor there. Kirk Cousins will have a solid year because he's a solid quarterback and will make the best with what he's giving. Up next, we have the Philadelphia Eagles, who we'll see improvement from, but because they're such a tough division, they won't have a pretty record. But if you watch them, they'll actually be an entertaining team to see. Carson Wentz will steal the show. And he'll definitely show you why he was the top two pick in last year's draft and make the case that he is still the best quarterback from that class. Now here's a look at the NFC playoffs. We're not going to predict them. We're going to do that with the AFC in a separate video. But we'll take a look at the standings. We have the Giants, number one, with 12-4. and four. The Atlanta Falcons, number two, who got the tiebreaker over the Green Bay Packers, who are three via their Week 2 victory over Green Bay. We have the Seahawks at four at eleven and five. The Cowboys at a five seed at eleven and five, and the Redskins squeak out the playoff spot at ten and six. So just like the AFC, you'll be getting three teams from one division in. The Falcons again got the bye week over the Packers because their week two victory over Green Bay. But here's a look at the playoff matchups. The Washington Redskins would travel to Lambeau Field to play the Green Bay Packers, and the Dallas Cowboys would travel up to Seattle, Washington to play the Seattle Seahawks. The Giants and Falcons got the bye. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know down in the comment section whether you agree. Who do you think will make the playoffs? Who do you think will get the bye weeks? All of that. I'll see you guys down there. I'm out.